Amin, what's going on? Hello, Dan. Hello, Ian. How are you guys? Hey, good. doing great. Man, it's been a minute since I've heard from my Taoist caller, my only Taoist caller. Still, <laughs> you're the you're the only holder of that title, my friend. What's going on? Yeah, so, so today I would love to um, explore about you know um, the role of um, intuition in you know martial arts, um, and I wonder like. Um, because you in when when you train in martial arts and how much do you think you know your intuition affect your epistemology or skepticism or you think it's something it's you know the martial art nurture you and you will you allow it to to be there if um, that makes sense yeah but what, what, it, so we since we just mentioned this define intuition what do you mean by that my intuition mm -hmm. Um, it's like you know your your instinct, your gut instinct, telling you something isn't right or something you should do. Yeah, I mean, I I think I think when you're in a situation, it's your training and it's the thousands of hours of doing the same thing over and over that that lead you to the next move. Um, and you know, and if if you're if you're boxing or kickboxing, and what allows you to see punches coming is just your timing and your drilling and, and practicing and doing that sort of stuff. As far as like knowing if something's off, I, I'm not a big, yeah. I, I don't believe in that because I, for me, it's like every time I know someone goes, man, I, I was walking down a dark alley and in, 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 you know, Budapest or whatever. And I just felt something was off. Well, yeah, of course. Like you're in some place that you don't know. And of course you're going to feel weird. No, no one's ever like, I was sitting on my couch watching reruns of, you know, what's happening. And I just felt like I was going to get mugged. Well, no, of course you don't feel like that at your house. Cause you're not going to get mugged. So I think that a lot of times when people talk about intuition, that's why I asked, I feel like they're there would still just a reasoned response. It's 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 our nerves and our anxiety based on on what we think could happen or what has happened in the past or what we what we know is a, a rough situation. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point, Ian, because people talk about intuition as if it's some sort of supernatural thing, right? right. And it's like something beyond what we are currently capable of doing. But the truth is, yeah, we do have these intuitions, but they come from either biological instinct or just experience over time. Like uh, I, uh, I'm a violinist, right? Uh, I was posting some stuff on Twitter the other day, and uh, I like to listen to songs on the radio sometimes and see if I can play it. And like sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm thinking about it at all because I just know which fingers go to which notes and stuff. And so like that's developed into my intuition, right. but that's because I've been playing for uh, over 12 years now. So, you know, I wasn't able to do that 12 years ago. That wasn't a part of my intuition because it wasn't something I practiced or developed. Right. So this idea that, oh, I just got this cool power uh, that or, or even religious experiences <laughs> to an extent are kind of crafted because you're in certain religious environments and you're kind of trying to think and feel certain things at different times. Like, look, I used to work church camp. Okay. There's a, they design a lot of this stuff to where the come to Jesus night is always going to be the last night of the week where the lights are real dim in the worship thing. And they start playing the song and the acoustic guitar and start talking about, Oh, that your sins and stuff and uh, how you feel guilty. And like, yeah, you're going to feel something from that because yeah. like you're, it's designed for that kind of thing. You know? yep. So, and yeah. if I could say like, like to me, a story, this is a, a few years ago. This is quite a few years ago. We had um, a, a holiday party with my gym and we all went out and, you know, people were drinking and doing whatever. And it was, and we were out walking around Santa Monica with 10 fighters, like, pro and amateur high level MMA fighters. One of which was also a Krav Maga instructor, like a guy who teaches not just martial arts, but he also, I mean, not just MMA, but teaches Krav Maga, which is supposed to be about self-defense and all tactics, right? Yeah. And I know we, we this, these guys were harassed, these two guys were harassing these girls. And one of the guys was like friends with the girl or whatever, got friendly with the girl and they were talking with this guy. Nobody even thought of anything. The skinny kind of, you know, awkward looking guy was standing there and he got a little tense, but 
this guy knocked out, threw a punch, and knocked out one of our fighters, who the Krav Maga guy as well, because he was standing there in his face going, hey, man, get out of here. You don't know who you're messing with. These are all fighters. You should leave before you get your butt kicked. And he had his hands down, and he wasn't in the right spot. He didn't feel threatened. And the guy just threw a wild punch, knocked him out. Another guy comes running over, and mm. <laughs> up an ashtray and smashes it on the other fighter's face knocks out two fighters one with a glass ashtray and one with his fist and then takes off running um now people went and chased him down and all whatever happened happened but he knocked this skinny awkward guy who had no training knocked out two highly trained fighters because they weren't looking they didn't think it was going to escalate that quick they didn't think he was going to throw a punch and their defenses were down they weren't using their tactical positioning they weren't any of that sort of stuff so to me it's like if there was ever a time for your martial arts instinct to kick in it would have been then yeah yeah right man that's got to be embarrassing oh my gosh i would not want to be that guy especially in front of all of your other fighter friends i'm sure they've been telling that story for years <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it's mm -hmm. it's one of those things where it's like it wasn't because he was a crappy fighter or anything like that. He just had his defenses down and mm -hmm. wasn't doing the things he had been trained to do because he didn't think he was in that situation. He thought he was just like a a, a, a goofy guy at a bar who was a little drunk, and they were going to say, "Hey, buddy, get out of here," and the guy was going to leave. He didn't he didn't evaluate the threat. Now, if it had been a different situation, he might have evaluated the threat differently, positioned himself differently, not gotten uh, so close. And then you could have, people could have said, oh, go to good, what good instincts or what good intuition. That would have just been his training based on evaluating the situation. But he evaluated mm. the situation wrong. They both did. Yeah. And he was probably drinking too, right? So right. that probably didn't help with uh, the whole instinct thing. But anyway, man, we've, we've talked about this a little bit. What do you, what do you think about all this? Well, the reason I bring it up in this context is that, you know, when I was in college, I took a self-defense course and there was a lot of, you know, um, theoretical like lecture before and in, com in combination with, you know, practical uh, moves to, to, to defend myself. And, you know, all of that come by and at the, in the end of the course that the teacher told the student, well, you know, so now you learn the idea how to you know, de-escalate the situation, how to escape, um, you know, and to, to protect yourself. But but remember, always trust your instinct. If something tell you that, you know, it, it isn't right and don't, you know, follow the, the textbook and say, this is the way I should do, but, you know, find a way to get out of that situation. You know, trust yourself. Yeah. Uh, that sort of advice. And, um, mm. And I see, you know, like there is a difference between that and, well, actually, I, I mean, like, uh, usually when we, uh, when, uh, when we, we train people in, in martial arts, like, the goal is, like, to make sure, like, the, our, we have, we have good agility and re, um, muscle reflex, right? To defend ourselves against, you know, a punch for, or a kick, it becomes a second nature. But sometimes when, like, I think, you know, if we act like, like, a, like a machine, you know, just follow that, it may get us in trouble. But if we yeah. trust our instinct, like, some, like we have to react differently, that it's going to be a different outcome, right? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think one of the first things I teach everybody when I'm teaching classes is your first option is to run. If it's, you have to evaluate the situation. If, if it's, your, if it's your, yeah. you're at a family barbecue and your drunk uncle wants to beat you up and... He's, you know, and you, you're, you're not going to throw a punch and take his eye out or smash his face into the curb. So maybe you, but you're also not going to run away from your barbecue. So, okay, how do I subdue my uncle without hurting him? Maybe I use some jujitsu, calm him down. If it's a situation, I'm, at a, I'm outside and I don't know if this guy's got a, a knife or a gun and there's people around. I'm not going to engage in, a, in combat with this guy. I don't know what's going to happen if I don't have to. That's the last resort. I'm going to get out of the situation. Um if I know there's no way out and I have to move forward, then I have to use that tactics. And that's evaluating the situation and de-escalating. Like to me, I haven't been in a street fight since I was eight, 18. Like I haven't actually had to throw a punch at anybody. I mean, I have a funny story about being 19 and, and throwing a punch and pulling my punch because that's how martial arts taught me and not hitting the guy when I should have. But I've been in altercations recently, like in the last 10 years, 
um, a couple times out in the water surfing, which can get pretty crazy, at least in California and Hawaii. Sometimes it's, it's people wanting to fight you after your shows, right? Oh, that's, yes. That's that happened. But oh, also, wait, really? Wait, that, wait, that's happened for real? I've, I've, I've had, I had, I had a guy, I've had a guy challenge me while I was on stage, and I told him he could come up if he wanted to, and then his friends escorted him out of the building. Um, oh man! But I've had, I've had guys. I had a guy when I was when my daughter was young. We were at Knott's Berry Farm, and I had a guy get in, get in my face about something. I, he perceived we cut it in, cut in line, or something like that. And I, I remember he got all aggro, and I just told him, I said I, he had his little kids there. And I said, and he was a big dude, but he was, you know, not in shape. He was just one of those big guys who talks loud. And, and I just said to him, I said, man, you are super close to embarrassing yourself in front of your kids. Like, you know how embarrassing it's going to be if you get your ass kicked by a guy half your size at Knott's freaking Berry Farm when you're here, you're here with your <laughs> Slurpee and your and your whatever you're trying, and you get your three year old and your five year old and you're just going on a ride that the, the, the the ride and you're coming off like a jackass for no reason. I said, and, and you're going to start a fight with me. You don't know. I, I, what if I'm, what if I can fight? What if I kick your ass the rest of your life? Your, your kids are going to be like, remember that time dad started a fight at Knott's Berry farm. <laughs> and, and the guy just was like, yeah, all right. And it was just like no big deal. And I've, I had, I had a guy surfing paddle up to me and get in my face. And I just calmly looked at him and I said, do you want me to choke you out in the water or on this beach? And he looked at me like, what? And I said, where would you like to be choked unconscious? Water or land? <laughs> and he just paddled off swearing. And my friend <laughs> and he started laughing his butt off. Like we were, it was like, it was funny. But to me, I'm like, I could have got into a fight with the guy if I wanted to. And I probably could have kicked the guy's ass. But that's a much better way to de deescalate a situation. You know, there's no need mm. to fight this guy. Yeah, huh. no. and right. I don't know what's gonna happen. That guy might be a badass. I don't. I, I could be underestimating him. He might have ten friends on the beach. So I want to know because um, so, originally Min was talking about this idea of intuition in in martial arts and how the role that it plays. Because it sounds like Min's had teachers that have told him that intuition is kind of an important part. What's your stance on this? Is that something taught at the science fight gym, or <laughs> or what, what's the role of intuition in all that? Again, I, I would I wouldn't personally use the word intuition. I would I would say instinct. Mm. I would say definitely trust your instincts and and trust. You know, I mean, I, I think we have a pretty good understanding of a situation for the most part. And I think, um, you know, like I said, I think I think you always err on the side of caution. You always, you know, you always walk away or run away or whatever you have to do first. And mm. it should be a last resort. It's I mean, it's uh, fighting is if you're a professional fighter. And you're going to get into a fight in a cage and the MMA and UFC, Bellator, whatever the deal is. That's a totally different thing. That's not mm -hmm. a street fight with a guy at a bar who's drunk. Who you know, that situation is should always be avoided. And I and I think, um, and I think everyone knows that. And I think I think the idea is you know even if I can de if I have to defend myself or throw a punch or do a takedown or whatever the deal is, it's just to get out. I mean, we're seeing with this with cops right now and, and, and the stuff with, you know, you've got the guy down his hand, he's handcuffed game over. You don't need to do anymore. He's mm. been incapacitated and put him in the back of the car, take him to take him, you know, downtown. You don't need to put your head on his neck. You don't need to punch him in the face. It's like, and that's how we should approach all situations, especially if we're trained, especially if we're trained. Um, because sure. Because I don't know, and I also don't know what you know. There's always somebody out there who's, who's you know, that's true. And you are. They can know a secret Tai Chi technique right. that could just rock your socks off. Their chi you might just be power. It. Their chi might be, yeah. You never know. You, unless you get a, a power level scanner, <laughs> you, you'll never really know. No. Anyway, Min, did that kind of answer your question there, hopefully? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Your yeah, answer very good. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Well, man, thanks for calling in again, man. Good to hear from you again. I hope you are doing well and uh, stay, stay strong out there. Stay strong. Cause I need you, man. I need you. You contribute to this show. Um, and I mean,